talk a little bit about air compressors. Um, a lot of people ask the question, you know, what size air compressor do I need? Uh, how many horsepower? Uh, two stage versus single stage? <clears throat> piston versus rotary screw? And so on and so forth. So um, I just want to really quickly talk about the, the compressor that I would recommend if you are a hobbyist. If you are a hobbyist, I would go after a five horsepower compressor that's capable of anywhere from 15 to 18 CFM or 15 to 20 CFM. Uh, that puts us right in the range of where we need to be. Of course, if you've watched our previous videos, you know that we need to be within that 15 to 20 CFM range and about 40 to 50 working PSI. So a five horsepower air compressor will be sufficient. I'm going to put a few compressors up on the screen that I would recommend. The number one being uh, an Eaton Polar Air. Uh, Eaton Polar Air compressors are extremely well built. Uh, they're very quiet and they're very efficient. One thing they do differently that many other people do not do, such as their competitors like Ingersoll Rand and Atlas, Copco, Polar Air actually reduces the pump RPM, the, the, the compressor pump RPM. And they do that by putting bigger flywheels. It's all about gearing. Uh, so they, they run a lower RPM uh, electric motor to power the pump. And again, they're running it at half the RPMs of most competitors. And they're around 1,000 RPM, maybe a little bit less. So what that means is, number one, longer compressor pump life. And number two, it's going to be a quieter compressor. And really, number three, uh, you're going to get more air and more quality air from a lower RPM compressor. Um, so polar air is number one on the list. You know, either a 60 or an 80 gallon tank is good for what we do here. Um, number two compressor would be an Ingersoll Rand. Uh, I love Ingersoll Rand. They have a 5 horsepower 60 gallon compressor that I have in my house and that's what I run one of these machines on. Um, I've ran that compressor for probably two years now uh, on what I would consider a hobbyist basis. You know, every, every couple times a week, you know, a couple hours every time I use it. And it can keep up very well. Yes, it's going to have to run a lot, but that's just the way it is with a 60 gallon tank. It is a 220 single phase. Uh, hopefully you guys can get by with that too. If you have, you should have 220 easily available. Um, number three compressor. Actually, let me go back and touch real quick on the Ingersoll Ram. Uh, this compressor that I'm putting up on the screen, make sure that if you go out and purchase the Ingersoll Ram 5 horse, that you're getting the SS5 pump. Uh, they have an SS3 pump. That pump is smaller, it's cheaper, and it's not as good. You're not going to get the CFM and the PSI to that pump. So make sure it's the SS5. That's the one I'm putting up on the screen. And again, I'll put uh, links in the description for all these compressors that I recommend. Um, but let's go to number three. Number th three would be a Quincy. Uh, really Quincy, Ingersoll, those, those are really good rock solid compressors. Um, Quincy does some things that Ingersoll doesn't, so on and so forth, but again, those are all good piston compressors, and I'll put a Quincy up there uh, for you to look at as well on the screen. The rule of thumb here, though, and you might catch the, the, the gist of this, any 5 horsepower or greater compressor is sufficient. Uh, the rule is, per motor horsepower, you're supposedly able to get about 3 CFM. So 3 times 5 is 15, 15 CFM puts us right on the border of where we need to be at. But again, most compressors go over the 15 CFM mark and they get close to 18 or 20. Again, these compressors are going to cost you anywhere from $900 up to about $1,200 to $1,300. Uh, they're all 220 volt, single phase, and then either 60 or 80 gallon tanks. Uh, those are compressors that are really good for running the equipment as a hobbyist. Uh, if you get into the high end, high end commercial, um, you guys know that you need rotary screw. At least I hope you do. Rotary screws are obviously more expensive, you know, anywhere from five to fifteen thousand um, dollars, maybe up into twenty, depending on what you get. 
but those compressors are very efficient, uh, extremely efficient. Uh, they're capable of producing high amounts of CFM, high amounts of PSI. Uh, they're just they're just the mac daddy of air compressors. But again, most of us hobbyists can't afford a rotary screw. If you can, good for you. That's awesome. Go get one. Uh, they're going to be the best for you. But uh, I'll throw up a rotary screw on the screen uh, so you can see you know, a rotary screw compressor that I would recommend if that's something you want to go for. But again, look at a minimum of $5,000 investment for a brand new compressor. And they are expensive to work on if they break down. Um, that brings up a point. You always have to look at serviceability. Um, you know, how hard, how expensive is it going to be to service this compressor? Piston compressors are always going to be cheaper to service. Just because they're like a car engine, they're like, a, they're like any other engine in the world where you have a piston, a set of rings, a set of cylinder jugs, maybe you have to do something to the crankshaft or the bearings. But piston compressors are cheaper to operate, uh, they're cheaper to maintain, and just, you know, rotary screws are just on the opposite end. However, if you look at uh, duty cycle, rotary screw compressors are obviously the best, 100%. 100% duty cycle. They're quieter. Uh, again, they're going to give you more efficient air, more clean air. If you go back to the piston side, though, again, us as hobbyists, that's perfect for what we need. Uh, we need something affordable, and we need something that's going to work uh, when we need it. Piston compressors, that's it. Again, I have an Ingersoll Rand in my house. It's a 60-gallon vertical, and it produces 18.3 or 18.5 CFM which again is perfect for an 800P, a 1000, you name it. Any of our machines, that's what it's perfect for. And so that's what I recommend for compressors. Um, if you guys have any further questions, please give me a call or shoot me an email and I'll be glad to try to help you out in any way possible. Again, thanks for watching.